everybody, this is Vanessa from Fantasy Faces by Vanessa, and uh, today I'm doing a video to help my um, mentees in my mentorship program to learn how to do some of the more basic um, beginning stuff, and today we are talking about basic line work, starting with commas and thin to, thic to thin lines. These are the backbone of any design that you ever do, so they're really important to learn. So first we're going to talk about brushes. I have here a uh, Mark Reed number 4. This is probably my most common uh, brush I use for thicker commas, uh, excuse me, teardrops. And then I also have a number 6 here, but I usually only do this for when I want to cover larger areas. And then this is a number two. This is not a Mark Reed. I don't know who this is by. It's been scraped off long ago. I've had this brush for years and it is my favorite brush, unfortunately. It is um, something I got from a, you know, just a regular hobby store a long time ago. So what the point of this is, is that um, you don't have to have fancy face painting brushes necessarily. The most important thing is having somewhat firm bristles, but they're still soft to the touch so that they don't scratch anyone's skin. Uh, synthetic or natural doesn't really matter, although it seems that natural bristles are um, a little too soft sometimes, so just be careful to look for that. I also like to get um, round brushes, that's what these are. Um, that have a blunt nose because some of them will come to a point and they'll have like little bristles that are shaved to that point. I find that when I drag those and my bristles have um, kind of gotten stiff with paint after you know quite some time of painting that they tend to separate real bad and they drag this really strange like little lines that doesn't look good. So I highly suggest having a blunt tip. Another thing to think about is how you load your brush. So, give me just a second. I have here um, a collapsible cup of water. This is what I take whenever I am traveling or whenever I have small gigs, and I'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. So you want your paint to be pretty creamy. And the difference is, <coughs> excuse me, I'm getting over being sick, um, that when the difference is that like I use this as a white and um, I notice that whites tend to be more creamy than black. Black feels more inky to me. Could be just the brand I'm using. So um, the consistency is going to be a little bit different. You're going to have to play with it to kind of figure out what's best for you. I also feel like white is more opaque, and I use it whenever I'm practicing because it doesn't stain my skin like black does. So notice that I am gathering the paint and see how it looks. I don't know if you can see this, but it's glistening, it's wet, but it's not watery. It's creamy. So like if I put this on my skin, it's not going to drip. It's going to go exactly where I want it to. Okay. And I fill up my brushes to the ferrule. That's this metal piece right here. You learn something new, yay. Um, so that it has plenty of paint because you want to make sure that you don't have to com constantly reload it. That's pretty important. Um, so here we are, we have a full brush. And we're gonna start with the most basic movement. Now this is a cutting board that I got from the dollar store. Uh, there's two in a pack, as you can see I have two right here, because I just opened this pack, and I got it for a dollar from Dollar Tree. I don't know if you have them where you are, but check it out. They're in the uh, cooking section, because it's made for cutting meat. And um, there's a textured side and a shiny side. I keep the textured side up because our skin is textured, and I feel like it grabs the paint better. But Practicing on skin is actually probably the most convenient and it actually works the best since you are working on skin at all times. This is better just for larger designs and figuring it out. So uh, teardrops. The first thing to learn is the press, which as you can see I'm pressing 
down like almost completely on this brush. There's my press. And then you're going to pull, and as you're pulling, you're pulling up your brush and dragging, and then you come to a point. That is the hardest part to master about this, is going from this thick push to lifting up your brush and then coming to a point. It's, uh, it takes a long time to practice this and get it right, so don't feel discouraged if you don't get it right away, because it took me probably, gosh, four to six months to get it down to where I felt comfortable with it, and I still don't feel like I've mastered it. And even people who have been painting for years sometimes have problems with their um, commas, teardrops, whatever you want to call them. So I want you to practice this. You pr press and you lift and come to a point. Press, lift, come to a point. Now sometimes if you want to get that point extra sharp, this is what, what I tend to do. I press and then when I start to come to that point, I actually twist my brush just a little bit to get that nice point. That takes a little bit of time to learn. This is a straight down movement. I prefer uh, at an angle. I think it looks better. So you see, at an angle, just like that. And they look better in groups of uh, odd numbers. So three is the most common used. Um, five, seven, doesn't really matter. It depends on what you're doing. And there's always supposed to be a focal point. So say this is the corner of the eye right here. Every one of your points is going to go sorry, oh well, to that area. <coughs> and you can do it in a reverse style too. Um, well, that's a little different. I should say upside down. So you press and you pull and you press and you pull. And you want them to kind of go graduating in, in size a little bit whenever you're doing it just because it looks better that way. And that's when you're doing your teardrop cluster. So um, when you want to make wings, when you want to decorate a crown. Um, so say here's the center of your crown, you've already done your paint underneath, and you're just bringing those clusters around <coughs> towards the forehead center. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> so there's also rever reverse teardrops, which I kind of mentioned, but it wasn't what I was meaning to say. Reverse teardrops are more difficult for me. Some people find them easier. I do not. But what it is, is you start thin, so you bring your point up and you start thin, and then you gradually get thicker, and then you do your drop. Um, some people do this whenever they're doing um, like floral groupings, and they want to make it look like little wispy uh, flowers are just kind of coming out. See, like that. <coughs> like sprays of flowers. But the one thing I do use this movement a lot for, <coughs> I'm so sorry, <coughs> talking makes it harder, is um, petals. So you start small, your small movement, and then you press, right? Small press. Oop. Told you this isn't my best. Press, press, Ah, you can do it the other way, but it's a little harder to manipulate the proper movements. I think it looks better with this. Now, I am not really good at it. I don't practice it enough because I got a pedal brush. So I'm kind of cheating. It gives you the pedal look immediately without hardly any effort. You just press down and it already gives it to you because of the shape of it. Now the downside to that is it's a specific brush for it and it's expensive sometimes to get them. But what's great about them is they hold, they're much denser brush, so they hold a lot more paint. So you can whip out those petals like nobody's business. You can do a full flower crown in like seconds. It's wonderful. Okay. So now we're going to talk about thin to thick to thin lines. This is uh, important for a lot of different uh, movements. <laughs> so for instance, say you're going to do a kitty cat ear or a bear ear or anything like that. You're going to go thin and then you're going to go thick 
and then you're going to go thin. Just like that. Oh, I don't know if you can see that. Hold on. There it is. So thin to thick to thin. There is your bear ear. I use commas when I'm doing kitty cat ears. So you're going to go thick to thin. And then, see, went thin to thick. To back to thin. And then I bring a little bit of thing down and then I do like little wispies in the hair. Because that's supposed to be the inside of the ear. But you use it in just about anything. Say you're doing the muzzle of a cat. Alright, so here's your nose. Right there. <coughs> so if you just do it a straight line with no deviation, this is what it's going to look like, right? All right. So say instead that you do it the way I do it, which if this is the mouth, right? So there's your mouth on a kid. You're going to go to the edge of the mouth and you're going to go thick to thin. That's not the best <laughs> version of it, but thick to thin on both sides. And then say you're doing a tiger. You're going to do your commas again. Very important. You're going to press and then you're going to flick in. Press, flick in. See? That gives that sort of tiger stripe thing right there. Okay. Now for the upper part where the tiger stripes are, you're doing your thin to thick lines again. So, let's get some of this excess paint off of there. This is the one movement I want you to practice. You're going to do thin to thick to thin to thick to thin. Practice that over and over and over. That will get you that movement that you need to understand thick to thins. Once you get that down, you can do stuff like spirals and you know you love a spiral everybody loves a spiral it took me a long time to figure out spirals but once I figured it out it's one of my favorite things to do now yay but you can also do tiger stripes so tiger stripe is a thin movement and you kind of move it around and then you do this weird little thing and then you go back to the thin Sometimes you can do it like this. It's really kind of organic, which is a funny artist way of saying, eh, whatever works. <laughs> but these are the two movements that are most important that I really, really, really want you to work on. Your calm up, press, pull up, thin, and your thin.